All right, I think we'll, well, we're not live, we're recording today. And I want it because uh, <clears throat> of some technical glitches, because that's how I roll with freaking technology lately. I think the older I get, the less uh, capable I am of uh, playing with bits and pieces. So today we're going to have a look at uh, the War Diary, number 23. Uh, I think I've mentioned before, one of my favorite wargaming magazines, it, it's kind of... Uh, I was kind of joking when I said this, but I think I mean it. Like I love Battles Magazine, although I find the the hubris of some of the writers uh, to be fascinatingly boring. And uh, uh, but but I but I love uh, in general I love the thoughtfulness that goes into a lot of the articles, although they tend to be a little wordy with uh, lots of metaphors and. Uh, you know, uh, examples and uh, background of themselves so that they, you know, they then, you know, reach back into the deep, dim past and provide some sort of <clears throat> nonsense uh, comparative analysis of uh, playing with a, a toy gun and uh, how that works with SPI uh, War in the East or something like that. So War Diary kind of skips all that nonsense and just digs straight in and gives you articles and talks about the game, the mechanics, what the dude thought about it, and whether you should buy it or not, right? Uh, with, uh, unfortunately, they don't have as amazing graphics as the Battles Magazine does. I think that's one of the wonderful things about Battles Magazine is they really just crush the, uh, the graphical presentation of things, and it's uh, very sexy, right? And also very opinionated. I think they also have a little bit of an agenda going on uh, over at Battles. But the good news is, we don't have to worry so much about battles because they've now become the infrequent publisher. Uh, even even more infrequent than they used to be, or, or more regular than they used to be. I, I, I wish they would come back and uh, publish because I, I've liked some of their war games and I've also liked a lot of their articles. I think, you know, Charles Vassy tends to be a bit of a blowhard about bits and pieces and, you know, clearly has uh, his little, little worldview. But, you know, I think he's a wee Scotsman living in a, in a drafty castle, so you can't blame the guy. He's probably miserable up there when all you've got to, got to eat is a blood sausage and scotch. So not a bad life, but not a great life. That all said, here we are having a look at War Diary number 23, and I don't even know where the fuck that came from. That was just like a bleh. But, and apologies for the swearing. Ho hopefully there won't be too much more of it. War Diary 23, I, I have spent quite a bit of time uh, reading most of these articles. I have not read them all in depth. First thing I'm going to comment on is fantastic uh, cover art here. Uh, politically correct, we've got, the, uh, we've got the Union forces charging up the hill. Clearly going to be successful because they look like they're all about it. Uh, so that's good. No Confederate flags to upset anybody. No, no rebel yells or anything like that. So Roy, congratulations for, uh, for, for not upsetting any of our, our uh, dear friends who get upset with seeing those sorts of things. And Roy's cute, isn't he? Can you see that picture? I mean, he's just a cute, did you want to just hug that guy? I want to hug that guy, Roy. I think I do. Uh, so anyway, there's an ad, uh, for, uh, for revolution games, Eagles in the sky. I am not an air warfare guy. I have tried. I really have. And uh, it's just not me. So that may be a fantastic game. We don't know. Now, so what's in the magazine? Uh, and by the way, this was a, this was a pre-release copy. I think it's now out. I think you can all get it. The uh, War Diary does two types of uh, printing, uh, if we want to call that, or publishing. One is uh, digital. So you can, you can just subscribe and order the thing online, or you can actually have a printed copy. I have moved on to PDF only, mainly because it's a, a magazine in size that I can pretty much consume in one sitting. And if there's something significant, then I'm going to take some screenshots and then I file it with either with the game in the game folder that I have online uh, or on my PC for that particular game. If there's something of note, Otherwise, it just goes into the War Diary, War Magazine uh, collection, and uh, we, we kind of go from there. So contents, uh, article about South Mountain. I'm uh, uh, interested in this 
Uh, John, John has done a pretty good job with this system. It, it's one of those games that it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not, I don't find it as compelling as uh, uh, Herman Lutman's uh, system, but it's a, a good, good, good system in, a, in of its own right. So I think that is uh, pretty cool. And you, we're going to get, we're going to get, we are going to receive a uh, deep dive from John that looks like it's going to be over multiple issues, which is one of the other things I like about War Diary is that they will take the time to allow a designer to write as much or as little as they want about their design in the game design notes that they then publish in the in the War Diary. So if it's two or three uh, across two or three editions of War Diary, then we get really comprehensive thoughts and examples of play and stuff like that, which brings us to uh, Russia besieged, right? Uh, a nice comparison here that art has been going through. Uh, there was a uh, content in issue number 22 that uh, was very interesting to me because I, I'm a huge fan of the Russian campaign, given all its, you know, history and limitations and all the rest of it. I think it's a solid representation of the Eastern Front of World War Two. I've played the Russian Russia besieged just the one time, and I found myself trying to play it like I played the Russian campaign, which is my first mistake. And then, obviously, not. Uh, I know I played that when I was on vacation up in the mountains by myself, and I know that I probably didn't focus on the nuances of the rules a little uh, as much as I should have. And I think this set of articles, this part two here. Go, really goes through a lot of the combat uh, stuff. We'll have a look at that in a sec. And uh, that's interesting in of itself. Uh, I read this quickly. Uh, not a huge fan of World War One in general. Uh, I probably should have a, a, a more comprehensive read here to see if I can get excited about it. But uh, it, lo it looks like a nice, a nice uh, long article on uh, uh, Soissons. I don't know how you pronounce that. So apologies, guys. Uh, designer notes for Archie's War. Uh, I think that is uh, that's from Worthington. Uh, don't know very much about this. Had a quick skim of that article. <clears throat> uh, thought it was interesting. Some some nice uh, screenshots. We'll have a look in a sec. Ottoman Sunset. We can uh, we can talk about that all day long, right? Uh, solitaire game, very popular from back in the day with uh, the Victory Games uh, publishing company. Uh, State of Siege games, kind of a push your luck thing, solitaire only. Uh, yeah, you know, if you like that stuff, you're going to love it. If you don't, it won't float your boat. Bitter Woods. I mean, let's get more articles on Bitter Woods because Lord knows we need it, right? Uh, nothing, nothing like having bulge games and Bitter Woods in particular. So you can go off to your local competition and be a better Bitter Woods player. Uh, Bloody Sunday, uh, more history. Uh, for, from the American Civil War and John Burke that writes a lovely uh, comparative analysis that ties back to the history. Uh, love that because I don't really, you know, I'm, while I like American Civil War games, I am, I am flustered by all the, the battles and the different names. The North calls it one thing, the South calls it another thing. Uh, then there's the campaigns that they sit inside and you really got to be a student of the American Civil War. So I, I really appreciated this article. And then there's an interview here uh, with uh, Hans Korting, which I also thought was fascinating. And we'll get down to that in a sec. So let's just skim through some of this. So uh, <clears throat> South Mountain. Uh, now, it's nice that these are tied together, right? So uh, uh, South Mountain uh, by John Southard. Southard, And then, of course, uh, we've got the, the, artic the articles uh, down at the end of the magazine uh, on four other games that cover the same battle. So once again, look, this is a long article and uh, comprehensive, some nice uh, historical artwork in here. Talks about the battlefield in detail. He's got his map here out here. I love that. That's very cool. And then pictures of the, the actual campaigns is Fox's Gap here. If you can't read that, I can zoom in a little bit if we need to, but we'll, we'll just kind of skim through this. And I'm looking down at my PDF. Uh, so uh, apologies for not looking to you uh, i'll be looking down here to kind of comment on stuff because i can't see it in the uh, in the primary screen that i'm sharing with you all right so uh let's keep going here 
So a lot, as I said, a long article. Now we've got some examples of the gameplay here being presented. <clears throat> a little bit more on the terrain here. And this is obviously uh, some decrepit terrain, not, not representative of what how it was, but it's representative of where it was. And then we can see some uh, the face off here at Fox's Gap. And then this article goes on and on. It's a really large article, and I love the thoughtfulness that's, that went into this. It was well, uh, well received by me. Okay, so uh, now, the, as I mentioned, uh, his art's second part on this with a, a deep dive into the Russian campaign's combat results and the uh, Russia besieged combat results and how representative combats will play out uh, in in these two systems. If I come over here, we can I'll see if we can get both of these on the page at the same time. So that's about the best I can do there. <clears throat> so I'll leave, leave that there for a second so that you can pause and have a look at it and you can read, read the text there for a second. And then, uh, you know, the, the, what the movement and activities, let me see if I can just make this a little bit bigger. Can I? So end of first and second impulses, the situations. So I'm trying to leave enough time here that you can just, you'll have time to pause. Nothing worse than someone showing you something uh, on a video and then they, they move on saying, oh, you can pause, but you've got to find that little snippet of time on the, on the video. So then here's the next one. And then here's the, you can see the difference between the CRT. So there's the, there's the Russia besieged CRT compared to the traditional uh, Russia campaign one. So this has got me excited uh, about uh, replaying Russia besieged. I am going to wait for the Finnish expansion and uh, give that a whiz uh, with all of this as well. So I'm excited about that. Uh, more analysis of uh, this is Russian campaign. This is what could could happen or might happen here in this situation, September, October. Uh, and then goes into some more detail here. Application of Stukas, et cetera, and blitzing using Russia besieged. Actually, is that Russia besieged? I think it is based on the counter work, hard work. Your odds calculations. So, you know, this is a, we're, we're well into seven or eight pages on this. little C movement action. That's pretty tricky, pretty sneaky. And then back to, uh, uh, that is not, uh, that's Russia, that's a uh, Russia besieged as well. So there you go. So a, a pretty, uh, a pretty long article there. Some ads. And now I mentioned here's a decisive victory, 1918, World War One. I, like I said, I have not read all this. I, I had a quick skim. Uh, it's a good solid review. Uh, it, well detailed and gives you a good feel for the game in particular i don't think uh, and there's some nice uh, photographs actually as well so i kind of take it back i was saying that uh well although you know the artwork's a different presentation in battles magazine and my point about comparing the two is that battles was has always been held up as the like the premier thinking man's war game magazine and i think with their now uh, you, know, you know not publishing or not publishing very often there's a uh, War Diary has really sort of stepped into that gap, not as big a magazine or as long a magazine, but certainly uh, certainly comprehensive, right? Like these articles sort of represent uh, the thoughtfulness and the comprehensive nature of this magazine, uh, kind of what we expected from battles in the past. All right, so this, uh, as I said, this, uh, you know, we could sum up here. You know, uh, so here uh, he wraps up and he says, as you can guess, the Entente side provides better play, solo play, suitable suitability. Nevertheless, the game uh, distinctive play gameplay should pique the interest of amateurs of low unit density World War One, uh, World War One games. So that kind of tells you uh, the sweet spot for the game player. So if you're looking to recommend a World War One game that uh, that uh, that are amateurs, this is your this is your title. You know, this is interesting that, uh, 
you know, Roy's got into this, uh, you know, uh, publishing these these games and they're, they're reboots. And I found Guadalcanal to be okay. Uh, I have not played 1914 Deluxe yet and I, I owe him a, a play of that. Uh, big maps. Uh, so uh, this was okay. I, I thought the map design could have used some work. The Where the maps joined is right where the action is. And it's not exactly a perfect match up there. And uh, I, I think there's there's some, there were some challenges there. And I think the effort to try and fix what was wrong with Guadalcanal originally really hasn't been alleviated yet. So uh, whatever, it is what it is. All right, uh, design it, design it. Now I know nothing about this game. Uh, so I had a quick skim through this article. You know, uh, it's it's a basically a campaign game around uh, Guadalcanal. Uh, tough, tough, uh, tough campaign, if you want to call it that, to model. And you can see the map here, very nice. We'll zoom in on that a little bit. Very different approach to uh, uh, doing the fighting here as well with this game. Uh, you've got these area movement boxes and holding boxes and stuff like that. As I said, I, I have not uh, played this, uh, don't know much about how it's gonna work, but this article that does give us a good overview. Uh, I, I, it's um, Let's just see if we can sum this up. And I'm just wondering if this is the, uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, I, so I, uh, right. So I think, I think from the designer's perspective here, this is a good introduction to the, to the game. And it's obviously a pretty straightforward and simple game, uh, but, uh, I, you know, and I don't know if it captures, captures the whole story, the whole theme uh, or not. So I, I need to go back and reread this, but I thought I'd share this with you here anyway, so you can have a look at it for yourself if you end up buying the magazine. Ottoman Sunset, you know, and analysis and strategies. If you're into solo games, then I guess this is your this is your Huckleberry. I love the artwork on this. It's pretty thematic. Uh, and there's some detailed assessment of the game and the number of cards, what they're good for, how many actions you get with each one, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, so if you're into min-maxing your Ottoman Sunset, this is your Huckleberry. That's the second time I've said that today, isn't it? Uh, I saw these and I got all excited about these, uh, this from Fortress Games. I'm not sure this is, this is my cup of tea here, so we'll see. Um, okay, bit of words. A checklist for the initial game turn, special rules. Now, Claire is, Claire Konzelman is a chap uh, who I only know from, from Facebook, but he is, as soon as he receives a game, he is the first guy to uh, begin creating rule summaries that he publishes. Uh, he does uh, additional incremental artwork on the maps just for clarity for his own usage. And uh, he will uh, color code his counters and stuff like that. And he always puts when he I, I tend to track his gameplay summary rules and uh, consolidated charts and stuff like that. He does a great job with those. So uh, this is a this is pretty cool for folks who are who are serious bit of words players. This is going to help you make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, you know, bulge games, the biggest challenge is, you know, the, the first two turns or three turns, depending on the time scale, there's always special rules and surprise and fortifications and the allies can't move and the Germans get advantages and all this sort of stuff. And bringing all that together and summarizing it and making it clear and concise and accessible is often a challenge. Uh, most most game companies and most game designers typically just write the rules in and then it's up to you to kind of keep track of it all and flip through the rules. Uh, what Claire has done here is summarize it all out, break it down into a chart, 
we have a Confederate person or a Union person here for some reason. And that's oh, so that's it. All right. So it's just the one, the one little checklist there. Okay. So no, no strategy coming from Claire on that bad boy. And then we deal with John, who is bringing out uh, a handful of games, Fry on the Mountain, South Mountain, South Mountain, Prelude to Antietam, and a Greater Victory, which is Lutman's uh, uh, system. And he'll have a look at all those and write about them, obviously give you some background on the battle first. Comparisons of Fox's Gap maps. Talks about here where you know, he goes into quite a bit of detail of uh, you know, the different unit formations and uh, capabilities and then uh, wrap stuff up there. So, you know, that's the, uh, all this interview is pretty cool. So Hans uh, Hans did Operation Theseus, Theseus for VUCA and he's got a whole bunch of designs. He also did von Manstein's uh, Backhand Blow, I believe. And uh, he's, you know, he's got uh, he's got a lot going on now. I, uh, you know, I played Crossing the Line. I thought it was a, a fine game. It's an update on a, an earlier uh, earlier game. There's a lot of die rolling in it, just because of the way the operational stuff works. And VUCA tends to put uh, quite a bit of what I would call Euro bling into their games. Satin finish on counters, you know, lots of you know thick cardboard charts and stuff like that. It's all very nice, uh, but sometimes it. Uh, the, the color palettes tend, for me, tend to detract from the uh, the theme that's going on here. But uh, I was impressed to read about Hans's background and his history with uh, moments in history and uh, his uh, designs and design uh, future design plans. So another great article in here that uh, you should all uh, check out. All right, so look, twenty two minutes on a game magazine. There you go. I'm gonna do this put the mug on the screen. Thanks for checking in. Hope this all uh, was worthwhile and interesting to you. And I will see all of you soon. We've got, uh, I've still got the killing ground uh, in game, in play. Made a couple of mistakes. So I'm trying to fix that so that uh, anything I record or write about in the future will uh, be cohesive and uh, consistent and make sense. So there's a little bit of fiddling going on in the background. Recently, trying to make sure that I get it all right. Uh, I had some challenges with supply and operations and how operations work and what the impact is on gameplay in terms of units that are allowed to move, not allowed to move, stuff like that. I think I've got that all squared away. So we'll be diving back into that. Still playing Third World War on Vassal, although we've had some delays because my buddy had uh, vacation time. He was up in Darwin and uh, I couldn't play this week. So we'll work all that out in the near future. I uh, don't have a lot else planned. Obviously, I can really only play uh, one game at a time here, and the Killing Ground has, uh, has become a bit of a time sink at the moment. So look forward to catching up with all y'all soon, and we'll talk. Ciao. Roll dice.